Hello and welcome. Uh, this is Eric Hanselman. I'm the Principal Research Analyst for the 451 Research Arm of Standard & Poor's Global Market Intelligence, and thanks for joining us today. Uh, today I've got with me Michael Dickman, the Chief Product Officer for Gigamon, and Scott Ward, the Global Technical Lead for the Security Partners segment at Amazon Web Services. Uh, welcome to you both. It's great to be here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me today. So we're, we're talking extension to hybrid today, and, and I want to pose a little question. Our, our voice of the enterprise studies indicate that while more than half of the respondents identify that they're operating in a hybrid mode, well, only about 40% have a formal operational plan for running that way. Uh, it's something that we've called the accidental hybrid. How can they regain their footing in these new patterns and, and really benefit from, from that hybrid operational model? Yeah, I love that term, uh, Eric, accidental hybrid. I think that's exactly how it happens. Uh, and so when we go out and we speak with customers, it's a lot of, you know, started in one place, maybe had an intention or a plan to move to one of the clouds, but then some other departments or other considerations came up and it's a little bit unpredictable. And so the question is, how do you uh, get that visibility across uh, so you can have consistency in the way you approach performance and monitoring? and also security. And I think the first step of that, you know, in terms of addressing that accidental hybrid would be to instrument uh, any workload in any cloud so that you can get that ground truth visibility uh, in, in a way that works and is consistent across all of those. And I think that would be the first step. From our experience in, in working with our customers and customers who are migrating to the cloud, nobody, there's, there's no sense of like being able to, to migrate overnight and take everything in, in, in one place and have it in the cloud the, the next day. When we work with a, a large enterprise customers, we often find that they're on like a two to four year plan for, for being able to, to migrate uh, fully from, from one location to, to another. So it's, it's kind of implied there that they're going to be running it in some sort of a hybrid fashion for, for a period of time. And so they're going to need to have some consistency uh, around key, key aspects of understanding the visibility of what's going on in, in environment A and environment B, or the components of one environment that are that are in different places. So uh, having a visibility strategy uh, is gonna be really key to a customer having uh, a successful hybrid uh, implementation and, and a hybrid um, you know, workload uh, while they're running or, or while they're trying to accomplish a, a full migration uh, into the cloud. When you think about what most organizations have gone through, and Michael, to your point, you know, this really is something where those individual steps were well thought out, uh, but as they've migrated, uh, as they've started, to actually in many cases, bring some of these operations into production, uh, those needs have changed. What should organizations be considering to maintain that operational visibility uh, as they're moving into these environments and as they continue to make these migrations? I think we've touched on some of the key pieces of this, but what should they be considering in more detail? And what are the, should those priorities be? So I talked already about instrumentation. And, and one thing I do also want to reinforce is going fast and getting this agility and empowering teams is a, is a good thing. And so we just have to deal with then the outcome of that, which is some of the complexity and diversity in the environments that come out of it which is a great, you know, a great challenge to have to keep IT as a, as a business enabler. And so once you have that instrumentation that I already talked about for visibility, the question is, okay, so now uh, what is the intentionality around which tools you want to use and which processes uh, to solve which problems? And I think there can be opportunities to reduce uh, and consolidate, but there's also a lot of cases where you want to bring something forward. And so no matter where that visibility data may be coming from, it might be your on-premises uh, hybrid, uh, your on-premises private cloud, uh, an infrastructure as a service deployment in AWS, maybe even another cloud, and then actually bring those to a central place, which may be uh, in the cloud or on-prem, it doesn't matter. But that way to have all of the data from all of the workloads being assessed in the same way in the same process. And obviously that needs to have the right context and enrichment and sometimes filtering and processing so it's efficient uh, and effective but that way you can really carry forward uh, some consistency, both in the way you adopt new tools and the way you carry forward existing processes as well. You start thinking about what that integration needs and to be able to get real operational visibility or situational awareness, you've got to have as much context as possible and be able to correlate across that, but particularly for security concerns. When kind of building on what Michael was talking about there, of being able to go fast, we often look at, at in AWS, you have the ability to actually be able to go fast and stay secure. There, there's a lot of customers who are, who are you know, you know, moving to AWS because they're looking to take advantage of the self-service and, and the elasticity and, and, and the global uh, aspects that, that AWS offers. It allows them to do a lot of things to differentiate their business. But at the same time, that means that there's a lot of change uh, and a lot of different resources coming and going, uh, new resources, 
uh, that nobody ever knew about before being launched. And so it's really, really important that uh, the teams that are responsible for that visibility are putting in place the right things that allow them to be aware when these new changes happen. You know, for example, somebody in an organization with a few lines of code and in just a couple of minutes could create a brand new virtual private cloud running multiple resources in it and, and they're online and doing something and you need to ensure you have that visibility right away. So it's really important for those teams to be implementing tools that are cloud aware uh, and also implementing the right processes that help to detect when these new resources come or go in the environment uh, and also be able to ensure that they're enforcing the right configuration of those resources either through bootstrapping uh, or through validating the infrastructure as code definitions so that they are naturally plugged in to these observability tools that are gonna help them uh, align to the, the additional resources coming in and still make sure they have the right control at all times. Really making sure that there are operational guardrails in place so that you've got not only visibility, uh, but also something that's going to help teams to further their, their utilization of those environments in ways that are operationally secure and compliant for those that have got regulatory concerns. Many organizations are, are reporting a significant skills gap in cloud infrastructure, and we see that through both our anecdotal work and our Voice the Enterprise studies. Uh, how can they manage this as they're moving towards greater cloud use? I'd say, um, to start off with, you know, it's, you know, it's very, very obvious, and, and, and multiple people and, and, and studies have reported it, that there's, there's a serious skills gap when it comes to the cloud of, of being able to, to understand the cloud and people that are, are available to, to come in and even perform uh, security operations. So, so the one thing that we really advocate for is, is automation, uh, allowing you to take and, and implement repeatable processes and let them be done by code so they can be done at any point in time. They're done consistently and you're using your, your precious human resources to be able to do the more important things that they're focusing on. So whether that be that they're enforcing something further on in a pipeline and making sure that the, the configuration is done correctly, whether they're automating the detection of something and, and ensuring that it's configured right, uh, or whether it's automating responding to an event that's been detected as a result of the, of the visibility that you have so that you can address things quickly and consistently uh, and use your, your, your people to, to the best extent possible. We also advocate for looking to, to, to push those that knowledge out into to more and more teams instead of running it in more of a siloed fashion. Uh, make sure that there's maybe subject matter experts and, and advocates in, in other teams that are also helping to enforce best practices so that uh, other teams can be uh, a bigger owner uh, in what you ultimately want done when it comes to security and observability uh, in the environments that you're going to be uh, deploying uh, into the cloud. So pushing really some of that knowledge out into other teams and helping those other teams really understand uh, really what, what capabilities exist and, and mastering the technology, as well as leveraging automation. I, I think you made a good point that I think that we see automation a lot of times as dealing with scale, but regularizing operations are also important. There's a great point on automation. I just want to jump in, Eric and Scott, on, on two, two more considerations. When you think about this run fast, stay secure, I think one key one is automation. And also like the point around bringing in some of those skill sets also into the other teams. I think the other two points I would raise is some an, uh, an attitude of investment protection around people and processes, and also um, around explicitly addressing the challenge of, of administrative domains that can create silos. So on the investment protection point, there are a set of skills uh, that work today and a set of tools that are in place today. And to make maybe only uh, one change at a time or a couple changes at a time versus all at a time, and I think we touched on this a bit earlier, is really helpful. And that's something we hear a lot from customers is they have to go fast, they have constraints around time, people, and money. And so to carry forward an existing tool process skill set into the cloud, is a huge benefit. And then maybe later they can retool and re-architect, but that allows you to make that transition with confidence. And then the second piece is around actually some of those differences that you might have a NetOps team, which might be a little more on-prem skill, a cloud ops team, which obviously is, is in the cloud, and maybe a SecOps team or DevOps team that works across both. And having that single source of truth for visibility can help them uh, really work well together, especially in combination with some consistency of process uh, and the automation that Scott talked about. Being able to make that transition uh, to extend the tools that you have into new environments means that you can help to do that training and that new skills transition uh, on your own time frame, And that can be a huge benefit. If we think about what that transition is, that can be a great way to reduce risk and to continue to manage those operational capabilities, 
of those security controls that you've already put in place and ensure that you're meeting your compliance or regulatory requirements as you make those moves. So important steps in that transition. Well, these are great topics and we could go on for uh, an hour or more on this, but uh, we're at time now. So thank you both very much. Uh, this has been a great session with uh, a whole set of important topics to cover. Uh, thank you to you both, uh, Scott and Michael. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you here. Yeah, it was a real pleasure. I enjoyed speaking with both of you, Eric and Scott. And for any of you out there watching and listening, if you want to learn more, please go to gigamon.com to find out more about how a visibility and analytics fabric can work across this hybrid cloud end-to-end. Uh, -end. Thanks a lot.